Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. This morning, Lord, in our hearts, in our spirits, online, oh God, um, we lift our hearts to you, lift our praise to you, Lord, lift our voices to you, asking that, God, you would meet us here. We know that, God, you are everywhere, um, and there's nowhere that we are separated from you. So be welcome amongst us, Lord, as we desire to continue to worship um, those separated by distance, connected, Lord, by your spirit and through this technology. We thank you for the technology, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those, Lord, who may be going through uh, loneliness right now, um, maybe just uh, sickness in the body, sickness of heart. That, God, you would minister to them, minister to all of us, oh God, and help us, Lord, um, join with you and join with one another as we continue our worship and fellowship online. Lord, guide our service this morning. Mm -hmm. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so right now, I'm just going to ask the, the Segura family to unmute their mic and lead us in worship. Can y'all hear me? We can, Isa. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just wanted to open up in another word of prayer just to set our hearts right for worship. So let's go ahead and pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much um, for this day, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to still gather amidst um, all the things that are going on in this world. I just ask that you would prepare our hearts for worship, that we would just um, focus on you right now, that we would um, just remember who you are, um, and that we would uh, not be um, discouraged or, um, or faint in anything, that we would just remember um, why we're here and why we're gathering here today. So I pray that you would bless us, you would keep us. In your name, amen. So the first song is um, Heart of Worship. I'm sure a lot of them know that one, but.
So thank you so much, Lord. Um, again, we come before you now. Um, bless Pastor Keith. Um, thank you for giving him the words to speak and to encourage us. And so I just pray that uh, we would um, stay <clears throat> focused and that we would um, have a <clears throat> have a blessed um, service in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Isa and the Segura family. Thank you all for that awesome time of worship. Um, I didn't want you to stop there, but um, hey, uh, we'll have more of you later on. Um, thank you for doing that. Hey, so um, as we continue in our worship, we um, just continue to look to the Lord. I've been thinking through, you know, how we can stay connected and um, make this new normal, normal and more consistent for us. You know, some of the things that I've been reading online is that, hey, keep somewhat of your regular routines as much as you can. As far as going to sleep, try not to be binging on TV, uh, waking up on time, continue with your devotions. I know for myself, I've been having a great time enjoying the uh, 14 days of prayer challenge. Um, those have been some great devotional times for me. I encourage everyone as we're going through these 14 days, at least today we're in day eight, that you do it individually do it together as a family. Um, I've also been hearing some um, some of our congregation, they're getting together online, maybe um, with uh, chat groups and also just uh, conference calling. So I encourage you all to um, continue to fellowship, get together, pray for one another, encourage each other, and the Lord will continue to keep us through this time. Um, as we continue in our worship, um, just want to pass on the mic and video over to Pastor Keith. Good morning, church family. Uh, what a opportunity uh, it is to uh, address you. I missed you uh, immensely, uh, even though, as Eric stated, that we're separated physically. Uh, we're certainly connected uh, spiritually. And I just thank God for the technology uh, to be able uh, to uh, still lift up the Lord and to worship him. Uh, thank you, uh, Issa. Wonderful, wonderful uh, selections. Uh, the songs uh, just truly, truly uh, spoke to my heart. And it just reminded me again for such a time uh, as uh, this, uh, although uh, many uh, around the world are uh, in uh, chaos, uh, they're panicking, uh, they don't know what to do with all of the uncertainty, uh, but we, uh, the church, 
we still know where our help comes from. Uh, the Bible has not uh, changed. Our charge uh, as a people uh, has not changed. In fact, uh, as uh, the old saying goes, the darker, the darker it gets, the brighter God's promises begin uh, to shine. This is when, as life becomes menacing, the word of God becomes meaningful. And so hopefully, uh, as stated earlier, uh, that you've been keeping up with us online with the 14 day uh, challenge has truly been a blessing. Uh, Pastor Paul uh, has been doing a wonderful, wonderful uh, job uh, with everything and, and just uh, with the themes of just being uh, faithful and being a witness uh, uh, for Christ and uh, denying uh, yourself. And just like uh, today, we want to talk about uh, we are the church, uh, not a, a building. And who would have thought uh, at the turn of 2020 uh, that we would be uh, sequestered in our homes, unable to meet in our designated places of worship in order to express our faith. These are something that, that we read about in other countries and, and in other nations, and we certainly did not expect that. Uh, in the United States, but here we are. And there are a great many things uh, that can be taken away from us as we have uh, found out recently. And that's a, a building, uh, that's a fellowship, a physical uh, contact, and we might even at some point uh, lose our freedom. We don't know. Uh, but the one thing uh, that we hold on to is our faith. And we want to talk about that uh, this morning. I also want to encourage uh, everyone that we're uh, wrapping up our meeting times and, and uh, the frequency in which we will uh, do so. This Wednesday, we're going to have a midweek uh, study, and we're going to start talking about apologetics. We're going to talk about prophecy. and um, even after that, uh, we want to uh, be able uh, to do some uh, youth studies, some young adult uh, studies, and in time, depending on uh, how long uh, this goes, uh, we desire our ministry through media uh, to be meeting uh, every single uh, day. Uh, because again, the needs of the body uh, does not stop. Uh, because uh, we're not physically uh, meeting. And so we, we desire to uh, allow the Lord to use us as much as he possibly uh, uh, can. And so that means we need your help. Uh, we need uh, the talents. And, and, and for you all who God has allowed to, to have some time, some of us, we you don't have uh, 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 that uh, uh, excuse that all of us say, I'm so busy. Well, for many of us, the Lord uh, has freed up some time. And so this is an opportunity to donate that uh, to the work of the ministry. And there's plenty of work, plenty of work. So we desire uh, to put you uh, to work uh, for the Lord. And so you can take advantage of that. Um, so uh, you who have been allowed to either work from home or, or maybe uh, uh, that uh, uh, your job is in limbo and you do uh, have some time, please reach out to us um, because we want, we want to use you. We want uh, to be able, again, to uh, make as uh, uh, redeem the time and make the best use of our time in ministering to others. And so with that said, um, let's say a quick word of prayer. And then I wanted to uh, be able to give you uh, some words of encouragement that I believe the Lord has shared with me. Father God, again, thank you for this wonderful privilege that we have, Lord God, to worship you, to be 
done so through song and now it's through the study of your word, Lord God, that we can, again, uh, have our hearts knitted together as one. Uh, Lord, we need a touch uh, from you. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can meet even from our homes uh, remotely, Lord God. Your spirit, Lord God, is not hindered uh, because we're not physically together, Lord God. Spiritually, Lord God, our hearts are knitted as one as we humble ourselves, Lord God, that you will be lifted up, drawing all men and women, boys and girls, unto yourself. So I pray that my words will be your words and that I'll decrease while you increase and you receive the glory. So we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all who are in agreement, let us say, Amen. Again, uh, I was going through. Uh, the word of God and a verse stuck out uh, to me. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine and he uh, was talking about uh, this verse as well. And I said, hey, you know what? That's just looking at that. And it said, Habakkuk chapter three, uh, verse 17 and 18. I want you to listen uh, to this. It says, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels to the chief musician with my string instruments. And that was written in a very difficult time uh, by uh, the prophet Habakkuk. And remember, he was the last minor prophet to preach to Judah before they were carried away uh, to Babylon. Uh, his word literally or his name literally means uh, to embrace. They, they were looking for something to hold on to. Just like many today, they're looking for something to embrace, to hold on to. And so people are clinging to the media, uh, CNN, they're clinging to the press conferences, to the government, they, they're clinging online, looking for uh, just uh, uh, some words of encouragement, uh, 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 from the medical uh, field. They're just looking for something to grasp on to. They, they're looking for some hope. And really, they need to look no further than what the Word of God said. And that's what Habakkuk was reminding his people. He was saying, though everything is stripped away, uh, though there, there are no food in the pantries, he says, uh, though there, there are no outlook uh, of, of, of jobs, and, and, and though uh, that everything looks, looks bleak, see, even if it, 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 it gets bad weather-wise, e even if it looks like the whole country is falling apart, the nation is failing, yet he says he will praise the Lord and that the Lord is his strength and it'll make them stand on high feet. Some of you may understand that saying, it's talking about how in Israel uh, that uh, it is built primarily with rocks and much of the country is on cliffs. And, and so they're constantly either on an upward uh, uh, incline or, or, or there is a steep decline. And so, uh, uh, they have like these deer that, that have uh, their feet. God has made that their, their feet are in curved in such a way that they have uh, just tremendous violence. And so they never really fall, whether they're going up or going down. And so Habakkuk says, God, no matter what the terrain looks like, spiritually, physically, in the natural, that he will give his people hind feet to hold on and to embrace him. Isn't that 
a blessing. Isn't that encouraging? And so again, I want to go back to our devotion, which is we are the church and not a building. You know, this situation is, is different from any uh, that any of us have ever uh, been in. Of course, we've read about the persecuted uh, church. And, and so um, uh, not being able to meet regularly and, and not actually uh, knowing how things are going to go from day to day or week to week or even month to month is, is not... It's, it's not that big of a deal uh, uh, to them because they're used to that. But for us, uh, uh, this, this, is, uh, this can be unsettling. And so it's important to understand what does the word of God uh, say about uh, the church in, in times like this? You know, now we're, we're going through some things that, that allow us to relate with the persecuted church because we, we no longer have the freedom of worship. I read somewhere where the church had, had decided that no matter what the government said, they're still going to meet. And so they, they, they're bringing in the police and the national guard and all those different things. And I don't believe uh, that as a body uh, that, that we ought uh, to be raising up against the government uh, like that uh, uh, because uh, what they're, uh, uh, what they're saying right now, because they don't know, and, and so they're forbidding large uh, gatherings, that's nothing for us to rebel against. Uh, they're, they're, they're not doing anything that says, oh man, it's causing the church to actually sin against uh, uh, God. Uh, the times that we sin against the Lord when it comes to gathering is when the doors of the church open and we choose not to fellowship. Uh, uh, right now, uh, uh, there, that's, there's a difference uh, because as they're figuring out uh, this coronavirus and, and uh, trying to stop the stem uh, of it, uh, that uh, Hebrews 10.25 does not apply uh, uh, in, that, in, in that scenario. And so, again, you're going to have people just taking things out of context because, again, uh, they're not able to do the things that they're accustomed to. But it's during these times uh, that our faith uh, should be growing and, and not withering. And for us in times like this, uh, where what the Bible truly says should be coming alive within our hearts. And so in both Acts chapter 7, as well as Acts chapter 17, uh, that's where we're going to be looking at our study verses uh, this morning in Acts uh, chapter 7. The Apostle Paul shares in verse 48, he says, however, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? And so he's quoting from Isaiah 66 and he quotes from Psalm 102. And then later on in Acts chapter 17, he says a similar uh, thing in verse 24, when he's addressing the people on Mars uh, Hill, he says, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. For many people, that's a revelation. Because when they think about the church, primarily they think about a building. They think about uh, the four walls. And so when they talk about either taking one, taking someone to church or going uh, to church when they talk about uh, sensing the spirit of God and, and, and getting direction uh, from God, uh, they're talking about a building. They're talking about a foundation 
that's made by man's hands. It's a place. It's a building. And we understand that because that's primarily where uh, the church meets for service. And so when you hear uh, going to church, you do think about a people, then you do think about a place. But if you stop there, then uh, you miss entirely uh, what the Bible says the church is. Praise God that he does give us places to worship, places to congregate, because uh, for the world, uh, they need to know where to go uh, when it comes uh, to uh, worshiping or, or, or finding the body of Christ. It, it identifies, it's a flag, so to speak, a launching pad. You say, that, okay, I know where to go uh, uh, if I need some, some spiritual uh, direction. This is when they meet, and so we advertise that. Uh, but for uh, the body of Christ, the church is not a building. The church is not a place. The church is you and I. It's us. And that's what Paul is talking about right here. That's because in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 6, Paul in addressing uh, the church and he says in verse 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He's talking about the body. He also said in Corinthians uh, that we are jars of clay. He says contained within us is God's holy uh, spirit. And so wherever you go, wherever I go, we are the church because his spirit is contained within us. So in reality, the church isn't the building. It isn't the four walls, but it's a people in which God's spirit lives and dwells, which allows us to serve and to, to pray and to encourage uh, one another, which is what we're doing now. We're coming together uh, uh, via uh, a video so that we can encourage each other. Uh, I miss your faces. I, I miss being able uh, to see you uh, physically, but it's still a blessing where I can get a caption, you know, uh, of you, you know, where uh, there you are, that I can physically uh, uh, see you. It, it, is, it is a blessing, but, you know, <laughs> that's not because, oh, you know, I, I, I'm not seeing you at Largo uh, High School. It's, it's, I'm seeing you because you're the body. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're at home or, or whether you're over someone else's uh, house or you're in the living room or where you are uh, today. You know, it's just seeing you because the spirit of God is contained within you. That's the blessing part of it. The building, the place, again, it's, it's where we congregate, it's where we gather, it's where we announce to the world that, hey, if you need help, uh, you can come here. And so now, uh, when you take away the building, that doesn't stop the ministry. Now the, the ministry still goes on because the needs haven't stopped. And so now we're announcing to the world that, hey, you will be able to go online. You might can't come here physically, but we'll still be able to reach out and touch you in a way that points you directly uh, to the true and living God. That's the hope, people. That's the blessing uh, that we have. I read a quote 
uh, that goes like this. It says, the Lord is not too distant where he is separated from his creation, nor is he an imprisoned God locked in creation. He is too great to be housed in man-made temples or buildings, but still compassionate enough to be concerned about man's needs. Isn't that a blessing? He's not too distant. We separated uh, from us. You know, the world is, is right now, uh, uh, they're, they're lacking that, that intimacy, you know, with, with one another. Because uh, if you don't know the Lord, this is all you got. And, and so you locked in to, you, to your home, you separated from people and the things that you derive, uh, 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 joy and happiness uh, from, you don't know what to do. And, and, and so they're feeling distant from each other. And that's because they, they, if they don't have the Lord, they don't have nothing to grab onto for the body. Although, yes, we miss each other. We, we have the Lord that he's, he's not separated from his creation. But again, and that's because he lives in us. But the beautiful thing is, no, he lives in us. He's not imprisoned by his creation. He still reaches out and goes beyond us and impacts all those who are around us, the world who are in need of a touch from him. And it's a beautiful concept. I want to end uh, with this. The world has recently found out, again, that a great many things can be taken away from things that they never thought possible. Access to jobs, cleaning uh, products, uh, things as basic as buying a loaf of bread, a bottle of hand sanitizer, the United States never thought it could happen to them, even though it's happened to every nation and country around the world. I can remember as early as the 90s uh, when communism took a hit and the wall came down and they said a loaf of bread uh, went from a dollar to $20 a loaf just in one night. This came crashing down and, and people went running out in a panic, buying as if the apocalypse had happened. It was chaotic. It was chaos. I mean, people, people were looting and robbing and killing each other on the streets. They, they had to send uh, their, their armed forces out there just to get a little bit of order. And it took them months Months to sort through the rubble. People were running out of there. But again, opportunity happened because it allowed for the first time in, in decades, the church was able to go over there. And a great many people uh, were born again and saved. Uh, Pastor James and, and his family and, and, and Pam and I were able uh, to go over there and, and we saw uh, the effects of that where we met people who had given their lives, but it was, it was a lot of fighting going on, just a, a, a lot of chaos. You know, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of confusion, you know, God is still offering peace to people. It's the peace that surpasses all understanding. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. He wants to use the body of Christ through whatever means. Ministry, uh, through media, 
and we're going to start putting out uh, a a weekly video called a, a breath of life. I want to copyright that so uh, people don't try to steal that. Well, now I'm just playing. <laughs> We're going to put out uh, uh, some other things coming on uh, the hot horizon. We want to take advantage and reach out to the masses as much as we can. We need you. We want you to be involved. So you be in prayer about how God desires to use you. Maybe some things you've thought about over the years and we haven't uh, implemented them. Maybe this is the time. Uh, who knows? But again, even if our freedom is taken away, the one thing that we can never lose and that's always present is our faith, is our hope, is our trust in God's word. I'm going to read again what Habakkuk says at the end. Though the fig tree may not blossom, no fruit be on the trees. Though the, uh, the labor of the olive may fail in the fields, yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there'll be no herds in the storm. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high heels. I share with you how Habakkuk, the, the last prophet uh, to speak to Judah, what's beautiful about this is that many believe that Habakkuk was also a priest. That meant that before he was a prophet, he was called uh, to cause the people to obey God's word. He saw up front and close that they did. And once they refused to obey God's word, then God gave him another job. He went from priest to prophet. And the job of the prophet was to come to the people and then to announce judgment. And of course, most of us would rather have been a priest where you just bring in the word of God to people and people to uh, the word of God. But there's a flip side to that. If people reject the word of God, then there are consequences uh, to that. And that's where the prophet would come in. He was one of the few that God had called to be priest and prophet. But even though he was announcing judgment, you could still hear the hope in his voice as he was sharing the word. Though so everything is taken away, he said he still knew uh, that he would be embraced by the Lord and therefore he will walk on difficult terrain just as a deer is able to climb the hills. He said he knew that he wouldn't stumble. He knew that he wouldn't fall because the Lord was his strength. The Lord was his hope. Amen? Family, I hope that you enjoy uh, this uh, word of encouragement. I hope that you take heed continue uh, to keep your eyes fixed on the Lord because he is still where our help comes from. I miss you mightily, uh, Pam and I, as much as we love and enjoy each other, let me tell you, we cannot wait <laughs> to get together uh, with our church body and our church family. But we also know either it'll be here or it'll be there. But we will spend eternity together. Love you. Stay encouraged. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Thank you for sharing those words of encouragement, sharing the words of instruction. And how we are to respond to a time um, just like this. Um, 
So at this time, what I like to do is I like to um, just open it up for um, a time of prayer and that we would um, just look to the Lord. And there may be some of us here today, I know a lot of us are feeling anxious, um, not sure about what's happening in us and just listening to the news and being overwhelmed by the media that's coming in. Uh, a lot of the news that's coming in is discouraged and it's making our hearts race and it's making us to worry. Um, we're, we are encouraged by how the Lord tells us that he would care for our every need according to his riches and glory and that we should be anxious for nothing, but in all things, prayer with thanksgiving, making our requests known to him that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our heart and mind. So we're gonna take this time and I'm gonna ask Pastor John if he would um, lead us in, in prayer. And um, as the Lord leads, we'll have a couple of people also just, um, just lead us in prayer and we'll move into a time of worship after that. Sure, thank you, Pastor Eric. Let's look unto the Lord. Um, First of all, I just want to say thank you for the encouraging word uh, that you gave the pastor, Keith Lord, just reminding us that you are our help, God. And despite all that we may be hearing or seeing or even thinking, Father, that you have promised to be our strong tower and our foundation, Father. And Lord, um, I thank you that you've even given us a few moments away from our normal schedule to spend that time with you, that you can continue through your Holy Spirit to put peace into our hearts and give us the things you would have us to be doing even in this unprecedented time, Father. It's amazing to me how, Lord, even during this time, Father, there's been no shortage of good works you're asking me to do, Lord, either with my neighbor or to serve my kids or to uh, help my wife, Father, or to pray. Or, and so that you still have work for us to do even in this time. This is a wasted time, God. This is time I believe you're using to prepare us for whatever you have next for us, Father. And if our heart and our mind stays fixed on you, Lord, we will be apt to the challenges that you put before us. You promise, Lord, never to put more on us than we can bear, God. That's a promise, Father. So, Lord, I pray that um, you would help us to bring those feelings of anxiety or feelings of fear unto you, God, and let you turn them into faith, that we still could be doing those things which please you and to steady us for the road ahead, Father. Thank you for what you're going to do, God. And we do continue to pray uh, that you would bring this to a close, that you would, you would annihilate or end the spread of this virus, God, that you would continue to give wisdom to the doctors, Father, and the treatments, Lord. I pray that people would um, even if faith would still use uh, precaution, but that we would also look to help people during this time as much as we're able, that you still may get the honor, the glory, and the praise. Father, thank you for what you're doing, God, and continue to use your church to be a light, even during this tough time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear God, Lord, I just like to thank you so much for um, just the ways in which you allow us to stay connected, Lord, even during this time. But I just lift up um, my faith community to you, God. I pray that you would just continue to give us feet to wash, Lord, give us opportunities to serve. Lord, I just pray for um, just your favor, Lord, even as we are looking around our home and looking to spend time with those people who are closest to us, Lord, that um, you will give us more patience, Lord. Um, you will fill our hearts with love, Lord. You will fill our hearts with gratitude, Lord, just for this time. Time is so um, precious. It's so fleeting, Lord. But you're faithful, God. For you continue to um, give us just these opportunities to uh, spend time with those we love, Lord, and to, um, and to just be a blessing um, to those around us. 
Lord, right now, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to remember um, to spend time with you, Lord, to remember to spend time with um, and just really be present with those folks who are in our household and um, who, who we're, um, we're uh, with, Lord, during this um, time of, of separation and quarantine. Um, Lord, I also just thank you for um, just continued favor in terms of, um, Lord, uh, medical staff, just people around, Lord, that you would just keep them safe, Lord, keep them healthy, and um, help them during this time. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Father, thank you so much Father, thank for you so much. Um, just this time of prayer and fellowship with one another. God, what a blessing it is to belong to the body of Christ, the called out ones. That's what you've called us, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for the church um, at Breath of Life in Largo. Thank you for all the other churches that are meeting together around this world. Thank you for how you are getting our attention, Lord God. This is what we have prayed for. This is what we have asked for, Father. We thank you so much. I just want to pray um, for the people who are making the decisions for us, Lord God. We pray for wisdom for them, endurance, help them to stand under criticism, Lord, and to do what is best for the people that they're, they've been called to serve. We pray for protection for um, those in our congregation and, and our neighbors and our family who are old. I think about people in my family, Lord, it, it just how this disease is just ravaging through the older population in Italy. We pray for mercy. We cry out to you for mercy. Father, you told us, your people, that we are those who are called by your name, that we should humble ourselves and pray, and that we should cry out to you and that's what we're doing. We're asking for mercy. We pray that you would stay this virus, Father. We pray that um, that more people in this country would not die and, and other places would not die. We are asking for your mercy. Our ears are open. We want to hear you speak, Lord God. You've got our attention, Father. We thank you so much. Thank you for how you have had mercy on so many people who are recovering, God. Father, let your church be your church, Father. May we not give in to fear. May we remember that in the last days, you said that the love of many will grow cold. I don't want to be part of that many, Lord God. Help our love not to grow cold. Help us to remember people, to care for people, to reach out. Lord, per adventure, you might give us an opportunity to share the hope of Jesus Christ with someone, Father. We don't take this lightly. Bless your church. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Father God, um, Lord, I just want to ask um, for a very practical need that we have um, in the hospitals, Lord, which is masks, God, to protect um, the health care providers, God, so that, um, so that we can be your hands and feet, God, and take care of um, patients, Lord God. I pray that you will provide those masks, God. I pray that you will provide um, gowns and other protective equipment, Lord. Um, I pray that you will please provide um, the ventilators that are needed to take care of people um, that are very sick. Um, God, I want to also echo what my sister um, just asked for, for mercy, God, especially upon our elders, Lord. God, please, Lord, um, continue to use this to draw us to you, God, and help us um, just to be a light, Lord, and as my sister said last week, just that we can look different, Lord, um, that they will notice that there's something different about us and that we'll have an opportunity to share you, God. We thank you, God, and we 
ask for your mercy, God. We praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. We also just want to lift up um, those who, uh, because of all this going on, who may can't work, God, and and may not have a means to provide for themselves, Lord, that you would meet their needs through other means, Father, either through the uh, the local government or through the church, Father. Um, Just hearing that there are many people that are having to go without, Lord. I know the school system is doing more um, to provide meals uh, for those individuals who who don't have them or, or for school age children who, um, don't, who, who use the school system to get their needs met, Father. And I thank you for that. And I pray efforts like that would continue, God, and that our love would abound through such efforts, Father. We thank you, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Also, Father God, I pray uh, that whatever endeavor you will have us to be involved in, Lord, uh, that we will operate in faith and not in fear, Lord God, that we commit all these things uh, into your capable hands, Lord God, and just as my sister uh, stated, Lord God, that the people won't just see us, but they'll see uh, you, Lord God. We'll trust that we're in your will, Lord God. That nothing, uh, Father, will happen uh, without your say so. So you continue to just use us as you see fit, uh, Lord God, uh, in this, uh, in these trying uh, times, Lord God, uh, that uh, the church. Uh, will step up and and step out uh, of the shadows, Lord God, and then people will uh, see uh, that uh, we belong to you, Lord God, that they won't uh, see anything physically uh, special in us. In fact, uh, it'll be said of us as it was said of the apostles that uh, uh, it wasn't anything uh, intellectually uh, great about them, but they could tell that we spend time with you. And that's our prayer, Lord God. Whatever you're calling us to do, that people can tell that we spend time with you. In Jesus' name. Lord, uh, I just want to lift up. Uh single moms out there, Lord, that are uh, afraid, Lord, scared, not sure where uh, their next meal will come from, Lord, or uh, just ask God that you would uh, just have your way, Lord. Uh, Let this be a time where uh, the church can be the church, Lord, and just really, uh, just as Pastor Keith just said, Lord, not walk in fear, but God, just uh, be your hands and your feet right now, Lord, and in this time that, Lord, there's many people that are in need, uh, more than anything else, Lord, they're in need of you. Uh, so, Father, I pray that, uh, Lord, you would give us wisdom, uh, you would give us uh, work to do, Lord. Uh, mm-hmm. If that's just praying, Lord, but if that's going out, Father, that, uh, Lord God, you would have your way with that, Lord. Uh, you would open doors that no man can close, Father. That you would uh, protect those who would would uh, walk by faith, Lord, and and just trust you in that, Lord, knowing that God, there is uh, many people in in need and that are hurting, Lord, and and uh, want answers, Father. So, Father, have your way, Lord, for those who don't have uh, 
the capacity to get on social media, Lord God. Those those moms that uh, those children, Lord God, that that are in places where uh, those things aren't available, uh, Lord God, uh, help us, Father, not to forget about them, uh, but to lift them up first in prayer, Lord, and. And if it be to knock on a door or to reach out in any way, Lord, have your way. Lord, we commit our ways to you, Lord. Establish our thoughts. This is a, a promise in your word, Lord. So we rest in that. And so, Father, have your way, Lord. Uh, be glorified in this time. Magnify yourself in such a way, Lord, where people would find hope, Lord God. Uh, not in government, Lord. Not in the system, Lord Jesus, but in you, Father. Because truly, Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. There is no other way. And so, God, uh, if you would use us practically, Lord God, that we may, uh, Lord, be your mouthpiece, Father, have your way, Lord. Uh, yes. just, Lord, send us, Lord, send me, Lord, send our families, Lord, as you desire to use us, Lord. We surrender all to you, Father. We just ask, God, that you would uh, be glorified in this time, Lord. Uh, just as uh, my brothers and sisters have said, Lord, there's so many needs uh, with the elderly father, uh, lonely list, Lord God, whatever that may be, Lord God, we ask that, Lord, you would grant us vision, Lord, that you would give us understanding on how to move, Father, uh, but Lord, that uh, you uh, could entrust us, Lord, to move, if that's your desire, Father. We just ask that, God, you would have your way, Lord, be glorified in this time, that people could see you uh, as the light of this world, Lord, and not anything else, Father. Uh, just as uh, Marjorie, Sister Marjorie said, Lord, let us uh, humble ourselves, Father, repent and pray, Lord, and uh, allow you, God, to use us in this time, Father. Yes. That you, oh God, may be glorified and may, uh, may, be, may be magnified, Lord God, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're going to continue our worship uh, and move into um, worship and song. Um, Isa and Segura family, if um, you all will go ahead and lead us, please.
Thank you so much, Issa. Um, let's, let's pray. Father, we, we do thank you for this time of worship and fellowship online. I'm, I'm just amazed, oh God, of what you can do um, by connecting our hearts, um, though distant, um, connected, Lord, online and through your spirit, Lord. You're a faithful father. You're a good, good father. Mm. And Lord, as we've heard your words from scripture written years ago, that we are to be encouraged because you're the God who sits on the throne. You're the savior of our souls. Lord, you are a healer. You are a provider. You are a protector, oh God. You are a refuge. You're a strong tower. And the righteous run to you and are safe. Lord, we find our safe place, our comfort in you. And Lord, we know that um, coronavirus, even though it's taking on the headlines currently, Lord, that's not the only sickness that uh, people are suffering from, Lord. Um, they're suffering from um, sin, the sickness of sin. And Lord, that's what ultimately you came to heal us from, to free us from, to buy us back from. But Lord, you came to die on the cross for our sins and to save us. And Lord, after you were buried, you were raised on the third day. And since you have overcome death, you've given us the power to overcome death. So even right now, God, if there's anyone listening online or through their phone, and that, Lord, they have not received that peace that comes, oh God, with, Lord, um, the salvation you bring through your death and resurrection, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that they'll cry out to you and that you will hear and that you would save them. Lord, our desire is to be with you this day and for eternity. And we thank you, Lord. We ask that you'll continue to bless the rest of our day and our week as we go forth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, thank you, Pastor Keith. Thank you, those of us, those of you all who are able to make this um, possible. Um, I thank you, Issa and the Segura family for uh, leading us in worship. Um, at this time, before we move into the meet and greet, we're going to give about five minutes or so for the meet and greet just to say hello to each other. And um, just want to let you all know that we do have resources online. Um, to help you all. The resource ministry uh, made a list of uh, helps for uh, families that don't normally homeschool. Um, the homeschool network put some resources together to help out um, in that regard. Um, also, we're providing information through Facebook. So if you're not connected to us on Facebook online, we ask that you connect to us there on Facebook um, to stay connected. Pastor Keith mentioned earlier that we are going to be doing more uh, activities and events online to, again, keep us connected um, throughout the week between services on Sunday, uh, Bible studies, and also uh, times of fellowship. Um, also want to remind you all that um, we are in the middle of our 14-day prayer challenge. You can find the devotions and the prayers and the time of reflection online. Um, at this time, uh, if there are no more announcements, um, Pastor go, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I also uh, want to uh, let any uh, visitors uh, who uh, may have joined us to let you know uh, that if uh, you are in need or uh, if uh, you desire to have someone reach out to you uh, that you can get in contact with us for ccbrotherlife.org uh, uh, that we are uh, still uh, doing uh, counseling. We're still uh, praying with people. We're still encouraging uh, uh, people. And so uh, if you have a need, uh, I don't want you uh, to feel neglected either please reach out to us and someone will uh, contact you and we'll do our best uh, to meet that need. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Um, 
it, thank you for reminding us of that. On, at the bottom of the our website, there is a contact us, so you can fill out that form, mm -hmm. uh, and it will send an email to us, and we we will be praying for you, and also we can contact you through that as well. And um, you also reminded me, um, I totally forgot that you can also give online. About two thirds of our congregation, they use the online giving service that we make available online. So um, just continue to give online um, through that service. There's a given uh, section and a button that you can use to connect and give online. I see many of you are getting ready to say hello to one another. So I'm not gonna hold you back anymore. Go ahead, everyone, good morning. Uh, we on <laughs> hey, guys and voice the family. Got a meet off? Yes. How y'all doing out there? Uh, uh, Ezra says hello. We just, see Ezra. Hi, hello. Hi. Hi, Ezra. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi, Hi Pam. Pam. Hi, Pam. Hi, Aunt Pam. Hi, Pam. Look, you Hi, Pam. 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 Oh, oh. see me. Oh, uh, what's up, church? Oh, sorry, I'm not sure. There you go. Hi, Sonia. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Darling, hey guys. Hi, Carla. Good morning. 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 Good Hi, Madison. Hi, Madison. Hi, Hi, Crystal. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Hello, hello. Hello. Good morning. 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 Yes. 
It's really crazy. I think because we're all talking. <laughs> Hey Daniel. Uh, <laughs> uh, so where's the party up there, folks? So who wants who wants to play uh Hello, family cash flow online? Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> 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 Everybody good to go? Anybody see anything? Oh, Daniel. Yes. What's up, Lo? See over there, Mr. B and family. What's happening? I don't want to say hi. I'm really scared. Because I was a baby. We see you, Tisa. Put your hands together like a chicken. Ted. Ted. He's so cute. Look at him. Kiss. Hey, Daniel. Hey, darling. <laughs> oh, gracious. Hey, Jessica. Is that you, Nikaya? You see Madison? You didn't see us. Oh, man. She got on here. Is that a little mark going on? Is that a little mark going on? What are you talking about? Say saying hello. I guess we ran out of time. I can already tell that. You remember? Oh, those are people on the phone. I just noticed that. She was real loud. Hey, Debbie. That's okay. This is too cold. Good morning. It's the first time we've seen each other in like two days. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. There you go. <laughs> See, not with, the, not with the voices. There you go, son. Cassidy, stop. <laughs> stop. 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 Oh, you want to see? Oh, Essie, why you making that face? Oh, <laughs> 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 